Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for more cheeseburgers next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Joe, the most beautiful hero in the history of cinema. This is another one of those scripts I'm just making because I kind of like the character. At the time I'm writing this script, there's no way to play this game on a modern console, so smash that like button and get Joe in Smash. Stupid boy think that I need him. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need the power of style. Speeding up, slowing down, and zooming in on the sweetest moves the world has ever seen. Next, we need a red hot kick, which is a fancy move that looks even better in slow motion. Finally, we need the boomerang, which my script keeps auto-correcting to boomerang. I guess that's fitting, I am clinging to a game that's nearly 20 years old. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch out for multi-classing minimums, there are a couple here. Dexterity will be number one, you need some speed if you're gonna punch so fast that your hand catch on fire. Charisma next, you don't perform without an audience. Wisdom after that, if you can still understand what's happening when you hit fast forward, you need some serious perceptive abilities. Follow that up with constitution, you need to stay alive till the end of the movie. Sylvia won't save herself, actually she does in the second game, Sylvia build when. Strength is a bit low, you're a superhero, but a scrawny one, and we'll dump intelligence. You know a lot of movie trivia, but that's not really practical knowledge. And it is for you, actually. Joe is just sort of an average man. So we'll go for Variant Human and scoop up the Fighting Initiate feat for Throne Weapon Fighting, letting you add two to the damage rolls of Throne Weapon Attacks, pretty important for our Voomerang, because Throne Weapons aren't that great. Bump your Dexterity and your Wisdom with your two free points, take Persuasion for your skill of choice and the Entertainer background for Acrobatics and Performance skills, really get that Henshin a go-go, baby. We'll kick things off as a fighter, giving us two more skills like Athletics and Perception and another fighting style like Unarmed Fighting. This makes your Unarmed Attacks deal 1d6 plus your Strength and Bludgeoning Damage, or 1d8 if you have two free hands and a d4 of damage to creatures you have grappled once per round. Grappling isn't really your thing, but punching and kicking definitely is. This is a little weak for you now since your dexterity is higher than your strength, but we can fix that, just re-edit some of the footage at home if you want. Before that though, you get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest, though for you it's less second wind and more like second patty, who doesn't love a double cheeseburger. We'll multi-class over to monk right away, giving us martial arts to use our dexterity modifier for our unarmed attacks, and you can make a second unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make one with your action. This isn't quite the fast forward, but we're gonna get there soon. You also get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. You wear some pretty tight outfits for a guy who eats nothing but cheeseburgers. Maybe that's why the outfits are so tight, now that I think about it. Back over to fighter now. That quick dip to monk technically slows us down on our path to extra attack, but it also gets us an extra attack faster with martial arts. It's not a bad move in a real game, trust me. It'll work fine. Especially since second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest that's three d8s plus your modifiers in damage with punches at level three that's a pretty fantastic transformation third level fighters get to choose a martial archetype and we'll go battle master for four d8 superiority die you can spend on three maneuvers sweeping attack lets you hit a creature within five feet of a creature you've already attacked as long as the attack roll would also hit them you do the superiority die in damage, I think it's a pretty great way to do the close-up pinwheel kick. Parry lets you reduce the damage from incoming attacks by your superiority die plus your dexterity modifier for a nice little dodge, and pushing attack forces a strength saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and strength modifier, pushing a creature back 15 feet if they fail. You can also add your superiority die to the damage whether they fail or not. Maybe you can punch one enemy into another. You also get a set of artisan's tools, and the most cinematic art of all is calligraphy. How many movies have been made about calligraphy? It's almost clear shay at this point. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement, bump that dexterity up for hotter kicks even if they aren't literally on fire just yet. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack so you can attack twice with your action, four times if you use action surge, and one more time with your martial arts bonus action, but we still don't have the full fast forward speed just yet. We'll bounce over to sorcerer for that, specifically a draconic sorcerer. Why draconic? Because that's the best one for Joe. The closest thing sorcerer has to chronomancy is clockwork, but that doesn't really work like Joe's movie powers. Draconic bloodline sorcerer get Draconic Resilience, making your AC 13 plus your Dexterity when you're not wearing armor, and you get one more HP for every level you take in the class. Some DMs are picky whether you use Unarmored Defense from one place or another, saying you have to use whichever one you got first. I, I, I don't care. If your DM does just mix this level in before the Monk level, it's fine, but just use this one. 13 plus dexterity instead of 10 plus dexterity and wisdom. I am not saying these stack. 
You have a Draconic Ancestry, which doesn't really matter right now, just pick a Fire one. Speaking of Fire, grab Firebolt for a little Fire Bomb, dealing 2d10 fire damage with a ranged spell attack, or create Bonfire for an AoE of Fire in a 5-foot cube, forcing a Dexterity saving throw on creatures inside and dealing 2d8 fire damage if they fail. Light lets you see in the dark with your bad human eyes, and True Strike lets you remind your audience that it's been over a year since the first True Strike joke, so if you're still here and being a gatekeeping jerk, I don't know what else I can do. I'm trying to tell you to leave. You're the worst. True Strike's the worst cantrip. That's why it's here for you, turd. For your first level spells, Jump triples your jump distance for a minute, helping you get where you need to be. Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration, to get there a little bit faster. Second level Sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points you can use to recover spell slots. You need all those spell slots for things like Shield to add 5 to your AC as a reaction, helping you slow down time and avoid attacks even better. Third level Sorcerers get Meta Magic, letting you spend your sorcery points to make your spells a little more flashy. Quickened Spell lets you cast a spell that normally takes an action as a bonus action instead, helping you get some of your buffs going or just throw out an extra bomb. Heightened Spell gives it a creature disadvantage on saving throws against a spell you cast. That's very important for something we're going to get later, but for now you could use it for Create Bonfire. For this level spell, Enhance Ability lets you really transform with a transformation, giving a creature advantage on skill checks of a certain type. Strength also doubles their carrying capacity, Dexterity makes it so they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less, and Constitution gives them an extra 2d6 temporary HP. Depending on the situation, use some fancy editing to make yourself look better. It lasts for an hour depending on your concentration no matter how you want to use it. Fourth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. Use this to cap off your dexterity modifier. That's still what we're using most of the time, even with all of this frantic multi-classing. For this level spell, knock rocks a lock, shocking it to make a drop to stop the lock from blocking you on the way to the shop. Breaks locks and makes a big noise. Fifth level sorcerer is what we're really here for. Third level spells, also known as the cool spells. Haste lets you double a creature's movement speed, add two to their AC, gives them advantage on dexterity saving throws, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, use an object, or make one more attack for a total of six attacks per round after action surge and martial arts if that floats your boat. It lasts for a minute depending on your concentration. After that, you're going to have to take a round off of taking actions and reactions to rest up. But if haste makes you go fast, how do you make enemy go slow? Well, 6th level of sorcerers get to grab another 3rd level spell, like slow. This slows down up to 6 creatures in a 40 foot cube that fail a wisdom saving throw. Failing that, they have halved movement speed negative 2 to their AC, disadvantage on dexterity saving throws, they can't use reactions, and have to choose between an action or bonus action on their turn. Also, if they're trying to cast a spell, you get to roll a d20, and if you roll an 11 or higher, they have to wait until next turn to cast it. While everyone else is slow, you can move extra fast and really style on them. As a Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer, you also get Elemental Affinity, meaning that when you cast a spell that deals fire damage, you can add your Charisma modifier to one damage roll. You can also spend one Sorcery point after that to gain resistance to the fire damage for an hour, so when your hands catch on fire, it's not that big of a deal. Now we can jump back to Monk. Are you following all the multi-classing? Second level Monks get another resource for you to manage with key points you can use to do cool Sentai stuff like Step of the Wind, letting you dash or disengage as a bonus action, and doubling your jump distance for the round. You compare this with the jump spell to really throw yourself into the air. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, which you can pair with Haste to dodge pretty much anything, even bullets. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks with your bonus action instead of one, which means after Action Surge and Haste, you can make seven attacks in the same round. That's gotta be the full fast forward button, right? Maybe. Maybe there's more. Maybe you should stick around because watch time is really important to the algorithm. But first we need to get unarmored movement, making you faster when you're not wearing armor, helping you get to the fun parts of the movie, not the boring exposition stuff. Oh, they're talking, great. Third level monks can choose a monastic tradition. If your DM is cool with unearthed arcana, ascended dragon monks get to be draconic disciples, letting you turn your unarmed attacks into acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison damage, and you can re-roll one persuasion or intimidation check for a long rest. We're really here for our red hot kick. Now you can turn your unarmed attacks into fire damage to really get that heat going when you're fast forwarding. For a bigger area of fire, Breath of the Dragon lets you force a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot cone or 30 foot line, dealing double your monk die in draconic damage, half as much on a success. You can do this once per turn with your attack action using one of your attacks. It doesn't deal that much damage, but it can spread around, so it can be good if you find yourself overwhelmed. You can use this for free an amount of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus, then you're going to have to start using key points, key points, sorcerer slots, sorcery points, battle master die. Boy, howdy, I sure hope you like resources 
resource management. You've got a lot of it. If your DM isn't cool with you using Unearthed Arcana, you can use four elements, grab Fangs of the Fire Snake for fire punches, but just tell your DM to be cool. Wear sunglasses. They'd be so cool to use UA. Almost as cool as stopping a bullet midair and punching it back at your enemies, like you can do with Deflect Missiles, letting you reduce the damage of an incoming ranged attack by 1d10 plus your monk level and dexterity modifier as a reaction. You can even punch the ammo back if you spend a key point and if you drop the damage all the way to zero, so that's pretty cool. Almost as cool as your DM would be if they let you use UA. We're gonna jump back to fighter now because, you know, multi-classing. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, bump that charisma modifier up so that when you slow things down, your enemies are more likely to actually have to slow down. And because charisma is cool, you're all about looking cool. Seventh level battle masters get to know their enemy, letting you know a creature's strength, dexterity, constitution, HP, AC, fighter levels, or total levels. You get two pieces of information per minute of study and know if your enemies are better than, equal to, or worse than you in these regards. Considering you've seen all of Captain Blue's filmography multiple times, none of his villains should be able to surprise you. You also get another superiority die you can spend on two more maneuvers. Quick Toss lets you make a thrown weapon attack as a bonus action and add your superiority die to the damage. Those boomerangs can really clear a screen if you need them to. Lunging attack adds five feet to the range of a melee attack letting you get in some of your dash attacks and of course you add the superiority die in the damage it does look pretty cool eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement keep working on that charisma you can't be a movie star if you don't have the looks and the poses ninth level fighters get indomitable letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest considering you have the ability to slow down the world you're fighting in it would be pretty embarrassing if someone actually managed to hit you 10th level battle masters get improved combat superiority turning your superiority die into d10s and of course you need a few more maneuvers to use those with. Repose lets you hit a creature that misses you with a reaction, and you add your superiority die to the damage. Use a dodge with your key points, then take advantage for a big old counter punch. Tripping attack forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature, tripping them if they fail, and giving you advantage on follow-up attacks against the prone target. Of course, you also get to add the superiority die to the damage as well. This is probably one of the best maneuvers. That extra advantage you're going to get on the prone target is a gift that keeps on giving. Our capstone is the 11th level of fighter for one more extra attack, which is three attacks with your action, six with an action surge, seven with a hasted action, or up to nine with a flurry of blows. Forget fast forward, this is basically chapter skip, just holding till the end of the battle when the bad guy is fully pummeled. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're really good at punching, and since you can change the damage, you should be able to avoid resistances and exploit vulnerabilities. You're also really fast, with haste and monk stuff mixing together to get the bad parts of the movie over faster. Finally, you're really good at handling incoming damage, with ranged attack counters, melee attack counters, and decent AC. For weaknesses, there's just a lot to keep track of. You have three different DCs, maneuvers for monk stuff, and sorcerer spells and key points, and superiority die, and sorcery points, and sorcerer slots, to manage, this isn't very conducive to just wanting to punch fire. Speaking of trying to play empty head, Joe has empty head, with low intelligence leading to illusions getting the better of you most of the time. Finally, your HP is a little mediocre. Somewhere around 140 for a frontline fighter means that you could be dying before Act 3 is over, but it's more likely that you're just going to have beaten the bad guy 20 minutes into the movie so you can put your feet up and rest for the last 80 minutes. Save your girl, eat your burgers, and do it all with red hot style. Just try to get things done quickly, otherwise you might end up feeling blue. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.